I'm really hungry. I didn't eat breakfast, so I am going <laughs> to lunch and dinner pizza today. If you're like us, you're constantly in the search for better homemade pizza. If you want to get anywhere near professional quality pizza at home, you are going to need to use a baking stone or steel in your oven. But which option's right for you, a stone or a steel? Hamlet and I are going to make ATK's thin crust pizza recipe with both options to help you decide. And we're even going to show you some other cool pizza gear along the way. All right, let's get into it. First up, Lisa. So I'm going to talk about pizza stones. Now they're not technically stones. These are actually made of a type of ceramic, usually the type called cordite, which is what they use to line the inside of kilns when they're firing ceramics. So it can withstand temperatures up to like 12, 1200 degrees. The stone holds the heat. It, it, it gathers it in as you're preheating it and then it radiates it gently. And this gives the pizza a beautiful browning and a crispness that's really lovely. It also cooks a little slower than steel. And that's the main difference between a steel and a stone. Even if you preheat both of them for a full hour at 500 degrees, they behave differently. The stone holds on to that heat and radiates it gently. The steel throws that heat into the pizza right away. And we saw this, we could actually see when we track the temperature, I put a probe underneath the pizza on the stone and watch the temperature climb, then watch it drop when that pizza hit the top. It cools it down very rapidly. The stone did not cool off as much and it just kind of slowly, gently declined and came back up. The steel, the temperature dropped farther and faster because it had thrown its heat into the pizza. And that's why you get that oven spring. We found different things about them. Some of them had handles or feet. These were the two that we liked the best. They're fairly simple. This one's called the Honey Can Do 14 by 16 inch rectangle. This is by Outset. It's a set of four tiles and they're about seven and a half inches each. It's about a quarter inch thick. Now you might think that these tiles don't have as much oomph in them as a thicker a uh, piece of cordite, and they actually were fine. They did really well. They made great pizza. And the benefit of these is, unlike these big ones that are heavy and you know hard to move around, these little tiles, I can hold this whole stack. <laughs> and you deal them out like cards. You put them right into your oven on the rack. You arrange them. They make a 15 inch square. They heat up in the oven for an hour. You put your dough on and it will bake. It will cast that heat into, it will radiate intense heat into the dough and bake it much more effectively than if you tried to bake on say, a rimmed baking sheet. Now, when you go out and you look for a pizza stone, you often find something that looks like a pizza stone. It's round, it's about the size of a pizza. You don't want that. You want a bigger shape like this rectangle. This one's 14 by 16. The reason is if you're trying to drop a 13 inch pizza on a 14 inch circle in the hot oven, you're gonna miss and <laughs> unless you're real good at it. And you just want that little bit of extra wiggle room for putting something down. So in general, all of the stones and steels that we tested were either square or rectangular and at least 14 by 16. To keep these clean, just brush them off. You do not want to soak them and get water in them because then when they heat up, that water expands and that's how you get cracks. You don't want to put soap on it because the soap will go into its porous. So it will go into the pores of the stone and then when you go to bake, the soap will come up and make your food taste soapy. You don't need that. These will be clean as long as you put them in the oven and you preheat them for a full hour at 500 degrees, that's going to kill anything that's on there and turn anything that's stuck on there to just harmless ash. So I'm going to put them in the oven and then we're going to preheat for an hour and then we're going to make some pizza. So one of the things that we love about uh, making pizza is that it's so easy if you have a food processor. This is our winner, it's by Cuisinart. It's a custom 14, it's a 14 cup model, holds lots of food. It's a nice thing to do to go a little bit bigger with a food processor because you can always do less in a big food processor, but you run out of space in a smaller one. So 14 cups, it's not that big, it's very simple, has very easy controls. Our recipe for thin crust pizza lets you mix the dough right in the food processor. It takes a couple minutes and then you put it in the fridge for one to three days. So you can make it in advance. It makes enough for two pizzas that are 13 inches across. It's really simple. So let's get going. So 
So the food processor, as you can see, made that super simple all in a couple minutes. Nothing could be easier. So I wanna talk about pizza peels. We've tested a bunch of these, and this is our longtime favorite. It's a, an updated version of it, which we really love. And this is our basic wooden peel. If you just want a classic peel and don't wanna spend a lot of money, this is about $22, and it's a nice, comfortable one. It feels good in your hand, has a nice, thin, leading edge, and it's terrific. But let me tell you why I really love this guy. This one is by EXO and it's called the Super Peel. It's a composite peel. They also have a wooden version. This one has a conveyor belt like pastry cloth on it, which you can take off and clean. It's just got a little clip. You can build your pizza right on top of this, or you can build it on the counter, which I was always forgetting, and I'd build it on the counter, and then I'd be like, whoa, how do I get it on the peel, and I'm struggling. This can pick it right up off the counter. It can deposit it onto the stone or steel and pick it right back up again. Ta-da! On the stone, this pizza is gonna cook for 10 to 12 minutes and you wanna rotate it halfway just to make sure if there's a lot of heat in the back of the oven that you're evening out that browning. I, again, like to just grab it and turn it with my handy tongs or you can put your peel under there and do that little shuffle they do in pizzerias. So I'm gonna go to the oven, put this in, and then we'll just set that timer for about five or six minutes, I'll rotate it five or six minutes more and it should be done. Look at that, pretty pizza. So perfect. So let's see, nice melty cheese, nice puffy crust. I have to try the crust first. <laughs> you know, homemade pizza right out of your own oven. Very simple. Can't beat this. All right, so let's see how Hannah did with the baking steel. My pizza's all rolled out. Now it's time to put the sauce on. Uh, one thing that is a really awesome tool for this is a ladle. A ladle is like a, weird, a surprisingly useful thing in your kitchen. This is our best buy from OXO, it's like 10 bucks. This is about a 45, 50 degree angle. This is perfect ergonomically to get down into big pots of soup, what have you. Uh, the other thing you want to think about is how long they are. You know, you really want something that gives you lots of control, but that you can get into the bottom of a deep stock pot. Ladles are awesome. They're super useful in the kitchen, you know, soups, everything, serving, they're awesome. And they're really good for pizza because you can scoop out the sauce, pour it on, and then use the back of the ladle to really nice and evenly disperse it so you don't have a soggy crust in one part and a dry crust in the other part. All right, so I have a baking steel here. Lisa actually just wrote this review. Two steels tied for the win. I have one of them here. This is the Nerd Chef. The original baking steel is the other co-winner, and both of them were truly fantastic. I actually finished reading her story, immediately went and ordered one for myself. One pro of the steels is they're basically unbreakable. You know, the stones are fallible, especially, you know, if you have a hot stone near water, it can crack it. That is, is a thing that is very common. So you really have to be careful. As far as like cleaning, this goes for steels and stones. Just do less. Don't wash them. Don't use soap on them. All the crud will just burn off. You know, if you really need to scrub something off, say some cheese got burnt on there, use a scrub brush, some warm water. Don't even bother with any soap. You know, really do less. And you can also leave these things in your oven. You know, people always wonder if you can do that. Some of these, like this one, it's heavier as heck. So here's the good news. You can leave it in the oven if you want. It actually acts as a thermal ballast and regulates the temperature of your oven. You know, it, if you, you don't wanna put something directly on it that you don't wanna have some extra browning because it will help with browning. And if you're cooking something delicate like cakes or cookies, you do wanna take it out of there. But for other things, you can just leave it in there and let it help regulate the temperature of your oven and give you a little extra browning boost. All right, so you preheat these the same exact way you do a stone. You put it in the oven for an hour at 500 degrees and then you're ready to go. All right, so a little mid-cook update. What I just did was switch from bake 
to broil. And that's because the baking steels are actually so powerful, you have to like harness their power a little bit or they will cook the bottom of the pizza before the top is done cooking. So if you switch it over to broil, the steel is still cooking the bottom really nicely and the broil is gonna brown the top. Let me give you a peek. Holy moly. Here, gorgeous looking pizza. I have been having so much fun playing with this steel. I had a house stone previously. I have to say I read Lisa's review. I ordered a steel right away and I see why they won. There is a learning curve for sure. Let me show you this. I burnt the top of the first one because I tried to use the broiler, but after about the second or third pizza, I really got the hang of it. And the thing is the steels conduct heat so much better that you actually have to harness it. You know, you have to learn how to dial it in. You know, your oven is gonna be different than my oven, so you really have to like get the feel for the steel in your oven. But once you do that, I mean, this thing is unbelievable. I've eaten a little bit already and it's absolutely delicious. Pillowy inside, crispy outside, totally gorgeous. So I wanna show you the bottom of this. Check out the bottom here. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous, I mean, my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna cut into this now. I have our winning pizza cutter here from OXO. You know, to all you people who always say, oh, you guys are sponsored by OXO, we are not. OXO makes some good tools. They make some bad tools too. I hate their oyster knife. Pizza cutters though, this thing is unbelievable. Huge wheel, huge comfortable handle, super sturdy, cleans up easily in the dishwasher. This thing is fantastic. I made this, this is pepperoni and pepidou peppers. It's called the Pep Pep. This is, this is my personal pizza cutter. It's our winner, but it's my personal one. I've had it for like five years. Look how easily it still cuts. All right, I am so excited to check this out. Wow. Oh my goodness. It's absolutely gorgeous. Huge air bubbles in there. I'm gonna try a bite. Mm. Okay, wow. It is chewy but tender. The crust is crisp. This is absolutely delicious. I'm so pumped that I bought one of these steels and I really can't wait to play with it some more. If you really want the ultimate at home pizza setup, you can put a steel on top of a stone. The stone acts as a thermal ballast, which means it regulates the temperature of the oven. So you can cook pizzas one after another without waiting for the steel to heat back up again. The stone is there underneath it, keeping it warm. And that is truly the ultimate pizza setup. I had a stone before. Now I have a steel, I can't wait to try both together. So as you can see, you can get good pizza from a stone and you can get good pizza from a steel. A stone, think of a stone like a, a Toyota. You know, it's a re great, reliable car. It's gonna get you to work. A steel is like a Ferrari. It's, it's hard to handle, but it's fast and it's exciting. There's a learning curve. You know, you really have to harness it. Once you do, it can truly take you to new heights with pizza. All right, so there you have it. Stones are great, but steels won our testing. They really got the edge there because they produce slightly better pizza. It was tender inside, crispy outside. We had that better oven spring, absolutely delicious. So for more information about all the products we talked about, check out the links below. Yeah, and please ask us any of your pizza questions in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button.